Good afternoon, folks. Good afternoon. My name is John Vanderwater. I'm the general manager of Miller Woodlawn Memorial Park. I'd like to thank all of you for your attendance here today for our event that we have every year honoring the fallen law enforcement officers of our community. I'd like to introduce the Bremerton uh, Police Chief at this time. Thank you, sir, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, and again, before I forget, I want to thank uh, Miller Woodlawn for uh, helping us to do this every single year for this really um, important and very solemn occasion. Again, I'm uh, Steve Strand. I'm the Chief of Police for the City of Bremerton, and I want to welcome each of you. And we will start with uh, the invocation, uh, and I will welcome up for the invocation from the Bremerton Police Department Chaplain Rob Steinbach. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. I um, just want to thank, for the, thank you for the opportunity to uh, just to be here with you and to serve as volunteer chaplain for the Bremerton Police Department. And I uh, was asked to do the invocation, which is just a fancy word for opening prayer, okay? And I uh, just thought about three things that I would like to pray for. One is just um, to thank God for all the officers um, and to honor those who aren't with us anymore as well as to pray for uh, the continued safety um, of our officers that are out on the streets and comfort for anyone who is here today mourning the loss uh, of, of a loved one. And so um, I'm gonna do that, and then at the end of my prayer, I'll read a little bit, some words from Jesus that uh, are a comfort. So I, hope, I pray they'll be a comfort for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you uh, for this moment to think of and to remember officers here in Bremerton and in Kitsap and, and around our country uh, today who have died in the line of duty serving us. God, thank you for their work and thank you for their sacrifice. It's good to remember them. It's good to thank you for them. God, thank you for the officers that we have here putting themselves in harm's way every day. God, I pray that you'd keep them safe on the streets. I pray that you give them wisdom in every decision they face, God, many of them that I've seen, and I thank you for answering that prayer even as I've been out on ride-alongs and I've seen that, God. I pray as well just for everyone who's here this, this afternoon, God, who is mourning um, just their own personal loss. Uh, I ask that you would comfort them. And I thank you for the offer and uh, for the, just the words of Jesus um, that he extends to us when he says, come to me all who are labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I just ask, Father, that you would comfort all who are feeling that burden this day. Pray in your name, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. And uh, before we uh, present the colors, I would just like to acknowledge a few special guests that are here today I want to uh, acknowledge uh, a number of our judges from the uh, municipal and district and superior court judge doctor judge bradley judge jans judge pagia judge holman so i want to acknowledge mayor lent from our city as well as council members mcdonald wheeler and sullivan as well as our county attorney tina robinson our we have our deputy chief uh horn from bainbridge island as well as uh uh, interim Public Safety Director or uh, Police Director Sean Delaney from uh, Polsbo. Also want to acknowledge uh, uh, Fire Chiefs uh, Wright and Duke. And with that, please rise for the presentation of colors. Uh, following that, we will have the national anthem uh, sung by Nikki Salisbury. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming 
whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Uniform personnel, military veterans, order! Huh. Order, Jerry. As we uh, move on in our program, uh, we have uh, a, f a couple of uh, different individuals that would like to make a few remarks. And the first that I'd like to introduce, and we certainly appreciate her being here, is uh, a representative of not uh, just law enforcement, but of uh, criminal justice and public safety in our area, and somebody uh, whose work we very much appreciate. Please welcome uh, Kitsap County Superior Court Judge, the Honorable Jeanette Dalton. Thank you, everyone, and thank you to uh, Chief Strand for inviting me. I think it's a quid pro quo, actually. <laughs> he, uh, he was kind enough to grace drug court with his remarks recently. Um, but I am truly privileged to be here for this event. I'd like to read to you the proclamation that the President of the United States signed recently for this Peace Officers Memorial Day and Police Week by the President of the United States, a proclamation. For generations, the brave women and men of our nation's law enforcement have answered the call to serve and protect our communities. Enduring long shifts in dangerous and unpredictable circumstances, our nation's peace officers embody the courage and honor that represent the best of America. On Peace Officers Memorial Day and during Police Week, we express our gratitude for the selfless public servants who wear the badge and put themselves in harm's way to keep us safe. And we pay respect for those who lost their lives in the line of duty. In moments of danger and desperation, the first people we turn to are law enforcement officers. These often unsung heroes risk their lives and sacrifice precious time with their loved ones so that their fellow Americans can live in peace and security. But more than that, they are leaders in our communities, serving as mentors, coaches, friends, and neighbors, working tirelessly each day to ensure that the people that they serve have the opportunities that should be afforded to all Americans. In honor of all they do, we must give these dedicated professionals the support and appreciation they deserve. The President's administration continues to work to ensure police departments and other law enforcement agencies throughout our country have the resources required to hire, train, and retain trained officers. They provide officers with modern and necessary equipment and utilize technology to enhance their communication networks. The President uh, knows that strong community bonds are essential for law enforcement to do their jobs effectively 
and he has established a task force on 21st century policing, bringing together law enforcement, academia, youth, civil rights, and community leaders to provide concrete recommendations to enhance public safety while building community trust. Law enforcement officers care deeply about their communities, and together with our partners in law enforcement, we must work to build up our neighborhoods, prevent crime before it happens, and put opportunity within reach for all our people. Because each fallen police officer is one too many, the President proudly signs the Rafael Ramos and Wen Yan Lui National Blue Alert Act last year. It takes a special kind of courage to be a police officer. Whether deputies or detectives, tribal police or forest service officers, beat cops or federal agents, we hold up those who wear the badge as heroes. Though they too often spend their days witnessing America at its worst, in their extraordinary examples, we see America at its best. On this day and throughout the rest of this week, let us celebrate those who nobly serve each day and remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice to move our world toward a more just and safe tomorrow. May we carry forward their brave and selfless spirit as we keep working together to shape a future worthy of their commitment. Barack Obama then signed this proclamation on May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day and May 15th through May 21st as Police Week. He calls upon all Americans to observe these events with appropriate ceremonies and activities. I appreciate the proclamation and I'm grateful to be able to read it to you today. Uh, but this week has more uh, meaning to me on a personal level as well. Uh, of course, I've known Ione George uh, and our prosecutor, Tina Robinson, for many, many years. And I've known Gina Vinecourt as well for many, many years. Uh, many years ago, I learned that Gina's father was Dennis Allred, who gave his life in service. Uh, to the rest of us. All of you I know are familiar with uh, police officer Allred's service and with his death. The legacy that he leaves is in his daughter Gina, who now champions uh, survivors uh, for fallen police officers and speaks regularly at events like this to honor her father, and she was only eight when he made the ultimate sacrifice. Semper Fidelis, always faithful. I was raised in the military. My father was a combat veteran. He did not leave the military service until I was 24. So I lived on military bases my entire life. Honor, service, those were words that meant a great deal to those of us that were the co officers, the co-servers of our uh, fathers and brothers and now sisters who served in the military. I was uh, on duty on February 23rd uh, when shortly after midnight I got a call from uh, Prosecutor Kelly Montgomery. Judges do search warrants as you know. And Ms. Montgomery said uh, your Honor, we have, a, we have an application for a search warrant. Are you ready? Of course I am. Well, this involves an officer shooting. In the back of my mind, I thought, oh my God, I hope it isn't someone that I know. But it was someone that I knew, Tony Radulescu. Uh, he was a police officer that I began to know, a state patrol officer that I began to know very well when I was in private law practice. I would sit with him after trials and talk to him at length about his work, 
and the other part of his work which involved testifying as a state patrol officer. Tony was, as all of you already know, personable and engaging, open and honest and a man of integrity. And he only wanted to be the best state trooper that he could be. And he was extremely earnest in doing that. And I came to like him and to befriend him when I was still a practicing lawyer. So it was extremely difficult to hear that he was the officer who was down, who was shot, and who had died there on the highway. Throughout the next 24 to 48 hours, uh, the prosecutor's office came in with more expansions on the search warrants uh, as they were developing information. And I remember when Ione George came into my office and reading over the warrant, I started to cry. I had tears running down my cheeks because it was Tony. It was someone that I knew uh, who had died tragically. And Ms. George said, are you okay? Do you, do you wanna wait until later? Uh, and I said, no, this is the human part of my brain. The judge part of my brain is still here and I can, I can absolutely do that. And I want to do this for Tony Radulescu because I was raised with that philosophy of Semper Fidelis. It is an honor every single day uh, when I come into the courtroom and I can see officers testifying, I get to swear them in. I get to hear their uh, testimonies when I issue search warrants in the middle of the night. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be able to assist you in this endeavor. This is a truly, truly magnificent week, and it is the only time, really, where I think that police officers uh, get to hear from the rest of us about how much we honor the work that you do every single day. Because we don't know if tomorrow we won't see you ever again. So what we do know is, for those of you that are still here with us, it is my honor to say thank you for everything that you do and for your courage to get up and go out and serve the public every single day because you don't know what kind of a fight you're gonna have on your hands today. Semper Fidelis, thank you. Thank you for those uh, excellent remarks, Judge Dalton. Uh, next up, uh, with a few remarks, please welcome our County Sheriff, Gary Simpson. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chief Strand, for hosting this event today. And I want to give a huge thank you to Miller Woodlawn for sponsoring this venue, as you have for the last several years, and providing us with a law enforcement monument. If you haven't had a chance to see the monument, please do so before you leave today. It's just beautiful. We're grateful for having a place where we can actually come to that's been dedicated for us, a place where we can remember our colleagues who have given their lives in the line of duty in Kitsap County. So we thank Miller Woodlawn for that. For a bit of history, the National Police Officer Memorial Day and National Police Week was recognized in 1962 by then President John Kennedy with the first memorial ceremonies occurring in Washington, D.C. in 1982. And as you already heard, May 15th to the 21st has been designated as National Police Week for this year. So today we are participating in just one of thousands of memorials and commemorative events being conducted throughout our nation. On Sunday, May 15, hundreds of law enforcement officers, corrections officers, troopers, and deputies gathered with survivors, families, friends, and citizens on the mall at the United States Capitol to take time to honor, memorialize, and acknowledge the lives of 123 officers killed in the line of duty last year. 123. Their names will now be added to the more than 20,666 names that are already engraved on the memorial wall. Of the 123 officers who died in the line of duty in 2015, two of them 
are from Washington State. While well, we're here today to re remember our local heroes and law enforcement officers, we also want to remember these two brave and dedicated men. Officer Rick Silva, end of watch, June 6th of this year, last year, Chehalis Police Department, and Trooper Brent Hanger, end of watch, August 6th, Washington State Patrol Trooper. As we remember the officers lost in the line of duty nationally and in Washington State, let's also keep the families friends and associates in our thoughts as they navigate the roller coaster effects of the grieving process. Law enforcement is different today. It is complex and a difficult job. Every day officers, troopers and deputies are tasked with meeting the demands and the sometimes unsurmountable expectations of our society. The challenges can be daunting, discouraging and sometimes we even ask ourselves is it really worth it? And in spite of the names that were called, the accusations thrown at us and the attacks we encounter, we keep coming back, ever faithful. We keep coming back every day to do better than the day before because we know it is worth it. This is the spirit and will of today's law enforcement. Law enforcement is the most honorable profession I know. It is one we can all be proud of. In spite of the sensationalism we often face today, we can and must hold our heads high and be proud of our chosen profession. We know and make a difference every day in the lives of others. And today I would like to recall the same spirit of service and sacrifices given by the three men of the Kitsap County Sheriff's Office, three who died in the line of duty. Sheriff Daniel Blankenship died in an automobile collision on November 4th, as he, uh, 1934, as he was taking his brother to Seattle Hospital after an altercation. His brother, Sheriff Paul Blankenship, was killed in an auto collision on December 21st, 1940, on the highway as he was assisting a, dis uh, a disabled car. And Deputy Dennis Allred was murdered on April 19th, 1978, as he was helping someone. As we remember these men who have gone before us, men who are committed to the service of our community, let's renew our commitment to watch out for each other, our commitment of service to our communities, and remember the commitment we made to our families to come home at the end of our shift. I'm very proud of this profession and proud to serve alongside all the members of the Sheriff's Office, all of the fellow countywide law enforcement professionals, and with our criminal justice partners. I personally believe that every day we're given opportunities to make a difference in our communities. Let's continue to do so in the spirit and honor of those that we remember today. Thank you and please be safe. Well, thank you, Sheriff. And uh, I'll have the uh, last remarks and I will be brief, but I just have a couple things I wanted to mention. You know, we hold this ceremony each year to very visibly and very publicly remember our fallen officers and to commemorate the sacrifices made by those in law enforcement. Police officers and deputy sheriffs and troopers are all part of a very polarized national con conversation right now. And we throw around loaded phrases like police violence and accountability and a lot of people seem to be uh, shouting instead of listening, including us sometimes. Well, we all realize that the vast majority of residents, of course, deeply respect and appreciate law enforcement and understand the challenges that we face every day. The current public narrative, let's face it, is encouraging sometimes and in publicizing sometimes more defiance and more violence against police. And it's creating more danger involving police officers. Yes, there are actions by police officers that lead to justified concern. But the heated nature of video and social media right now means that even completely justifiable actions by police are sometimes scrutinized and sent around on viral video with no context and second guessed. And the only people getting attention right now sometimes seems to be those who are shouting instead of those who are listening. Last year, the U.S. Department of Justice published a study on ambush attacks on police. It notes and I'm quoting here, concerns about targeted violence against police are rising in an era of strained community relations, struggles with police legitimacy, and anti-government extremism. After years of holding steady, the number of ambushes on police is rising and now constitutes the second leading cause of shooting deaths of officers. 
So far in 2016, 35 officers have lost their lives in the line of duty, 17 of those by gunfire, and that's a 55% increase over last year. Some of those you remember today were killed in the line of duty in defiant ambush style attacks. They were attacked specifically because they were law enforcement officers. They were targeted because they embody and represent our civil society and the rule of law. As we remember and reflect on their sacrifice, we should redouble our efforts to encourage a civil conversation about our profession and policing. Those who loaded, lo use loaded phrases should also focus on reducing violence against the police. The 35 officers who gave their lives nationally this year, the seven who have died in the line of duty here in Kitsap County, and the 282 on the law enforcement memorial in Olympia, all died serving the public, working to defend the Constitution and to enforce the rule of law. Yes, we can always improve how we do this job, but we need to say out loud that we are very, very proud to serve as police officers, deputy sheriffs, and troopers. We serve with professionalism and humility, an honest, open dialogue, and raising the level of discussion is the best way to honor the sacrifice of those we remember today. And with that, before we uh, present the wreath, uh, I would just like to explain what's coming up. And this is in your program, but I'd just like to explain what's gonna happen. Uh, this is sort of the main portion of our program uh, that will be uh, completed by our combi combined color guard of the Bremerton Police and the Kitsap County Sheriff's Office. Following the presentation of the wreath, uh, we will have uh, Amazing Grace by our bagpiper, Charlie Fattis. Then the tolling of the bells, and the bells are tolled by our tradition one time for each month of the year, and that is to represent all fallen police officers. Following that, uh, we will have taps, and uh, Detective Smith was not able to make it, so we're very appreciative of having musician first class Aaron Deaton from the Navy Band Northwest to do taps. And all of that will happen uh, in succession, and then following that, we'll have the benediction. Thank you. I'm sorry, if you would, if you would rise for the presentation of the wreath.
Get up our personnel, military veterans. Oh, no! If you would just remain standing for just a moment, I'm going to introduce uh, the chaplain for the benediction. After that, and after the benediction is complete, the uh, combined honor guard will, uh, com combined color guard will retire, and then following that time, uh, there will be refreshments inside. Uh, your program says the benediction will be by Chaplain Steinbach, but we weren't sure if Chaplain Bailey from the sheriff's office would be here. He, he is, so we're going to have a pinch hitter, and our benediction uh, will be from Chaplain Bailey. Thank you, Chief. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity today to come here to remember those officers that gave their all for you, for the service of their community. Father, help us to honor them as well as remember. But Father, as we remember them, help us also to not only remember who they were, but what they did and why they did it. Father, we thank you for such dedicated service. And Lord, we thank you for all of the active duty officers and troopers and deputies. And Father, for all those that are serving in this way, we thank you for them. We know that their duty is dangerous, so we just ask a special protection around them, that you would watch over them and protect them. We thank you, Father, for, again for this opportunity and help us again to honor and to remember. In Jesus' name. Amen. Retire the honor guard. 